Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be continuing the saga that is the chapter that is the event that once began the project of installing gauges in our classic Buick LS nonsense swap. In a previous episode, I went ahead and cut out a gauge panel, like just out of wood, just random materials I found around the garage, stained it, did all that fun nonsense to it, and got our quad gauge from Speed Hut installed. Now we're gonna go up the ante and actually finish a project. I know, you don't like that. I don't like it either, but I wanted a full set of gauges and to know how fast I'm going at approximately what RPM. This gauge is from Speed Hut. They've got a giant configurator that allows you to put anything and everything you would ever want. And also you could just email them if you've ever got something really custom and they'll take care of you. This is a two in one, four and a half inch gauge. It's got a speedometer and a tack over there and turn signal lights and a high beam indicator and it's GPS based. So that's one less thing for me to screw up installing. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna try. Now we're ready to start wiring this guy in. I've already got a head start because our inverter for the backlighting is already installed on the other gauge. At first glance, this seems like the most basic connection, but it's gonna get a little tricky here in a second. This has got your 12 volt ignition, ground, and your dash light sense. For the actual backlighting of the gauge that lights up all the dial, you need to have this hooked up to the inverter. We've already got one of those installed and it has a second output from the other gauge, so that'll just be a simple matter of plugging it in on this one. They call this a constant 12 volt hookup. That should tip off your red flag right there that something that needs a constant 12 volt hookup that doesn't really have memory, but I mean it does, but it really doesn't because even if you disconnected your battery, you don't lose your odometer. Why does it have to have a constant wire? According to Speed Hut, if you don't hook up this wire to a constant source, it could take up to a minute for your GPS to actually acquire the satellite. Rarely is this thing ready in a minute to actually, you know, get out there and do something. I don't know anybody that gets into classic cars and starts the key and has it already in reverse at that point. Got a bundle of wires for our left turn signal, right turn signal, and high beams. Next, you've got your TAC input wire. The last thing needed for this install is since this is the GPS version, we actually have to install a GPS antenna. Speed Hut recommends mounting this on the outside of the car. Okay, <laughs> that's that's cute. I like installing it on the, well, just throw it on the dash. That That's my way of installing it. My $10 two cent tip though, is if you've got a dash with a defroster vent, run it through your defroster stuff. That way it just pops out and you don't see the wire or just run it to the back edge of the thing. And just don't, don't look at it. I wish Speed Hut would invest a little bit more here, like, <clears throat> like Dakota Digital, and make it so you don't have to use pull-up resistors for their tax on some of the newer stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It's 2020 something one. To make matters even more fun, Speed Hut's included a four and a half inch wiring guide for, um, well, a GPS fuel level and speedometer. I, I don't, I don't, I don't have this. So I gotta turn to the internet for my answers. It comes out of the box with a 4.7K ohm resistor. Over the years, I found that some vehicles, for whatever reason, don't really respond to the 4.7K and we need to go up to like a six to a 10,000. So just play around with this stupid stuff because, well, you're gonna have to play around with it. You don't have to do all this on an LS engine. It's got coil control wires coming off your ECU. Hook the speed tack wire to any of those and it should work just fine. No. Mm, it's not, it hasn't worked out in my favor and why we're not gonna use it today. Tacks are notorious for actually looking right where they're supposed to be. I, I don't know what kind of accuracy they shot for at the factory, but uh, it's got a pretty wide spread. If you hook it up with the resistor and then go into your settings on HP Tuner or EFI Live or whatever flavor you choose to tune with, you can actually dial in the pulses to raise it or lower it to make it look right. Now, is it actually right? Meh, not really. Not really gonna argue about that one. But in the driver's seat, I wanted to look accurate. And if it looks different based on where I sit or kind of just how accurate the gauge is, I'd rather it look right, be wrong, but kind of give me a better idea of what I'm actually doing. And there we are, totally done, finished, installed, whole kitten boodles, kitten booty booties. Kitten booties. I may be a little partial, but I think this came out really darn good. Just take a look at that. Nothing looks sweeter than a set of gauges. Totally finished, totally not keep your eye on this part right in the center or and ignore this vinyl that's falling off over here in the missing trim pieces. Now we can see if our turn signals are actually turn signaling and uh, 
Look at that, turn signal indicators. This really is the 27th century. Well, the high beam indicator, you're just gonna have to take my word for it that the high beams work. They totally do. They totally do. They don't. So whenever I need to get people out of my way, I usually just honk. And with that, that concludes our wiring guide. So good luck. <laughs>